400 kids take Khalid Abdul the vilest, most vulgar terms, their notions of there's no conflict. Jews perhaps have a higher degree of sensitivity. I don't understand how this must be supplanted. It's your wish, not people. I think it's our intention and our welcome to anyone who wants to come and worship. In June, California voters will go to the polls to decide the future of bilingual education, once again putting the Golden State at the center of a growing national controversy. Should children learn in their native languages while acquiring English skills? Or is immersion in English the best way to give students the skills they will need to succeed? Good evening, welcome to Beyond the Headlines. I'm Kathy Mendelson-Siegel. Joining me this evening are Ramona Ripston, Executive Director of the ACLU in Southern California, Sherry Annis, Spokesperson for the English for the Children campaign, Holly Thier, campaign spokesperson for the No on 227 campaign, in fact, the same initiative campaign, and Dr. Hanan Alexander, vice president for academic affairs and dean of the School of Education at the University of Judaism. Welcome, everyone. I want to begin with you, Hanan. When we talk about bilingual education, what are we talking about? We're talking about teaching in a target language of instruction. Target language being? Target language meaning the language that you want the students to acquire. So, for example, if uh, we're looking at children that are sp native in Spanish and we want to teach them in Spanish as opposed to teaching them in English, or teaching children that we, if we want them to, to acquire English, teaching them in English. So not only are we teaching them English language, but we're also teaching them mathematics in English and uh, other subject matters in English as well, so that the, the, the language of instruction is actually the language that we want the students to acquire. So in a bilingual setting, we're teaching the Spanish-speaking child math in English? In a bilingual setting, we, we could be teaching the, the Spanish-speaking child's math in English or in Spanish, depending on which language we thought was more sufficient. In the policy issue, for the most part, bilingual education in California has meant that we teach Spanish-speaking children in Spanish primarily so that they can acquire the skills that they need to acquire in mathematics and then secondarily in English. And the, the debate, I think, that we're having is which is the better way for those young people to acquire those skills? Should they acquire the skills by teaching them in Spanish which is the language they speak at home, or should we help them to acquire mathematical skills and other kinds of skills by teaching them in English so that they, at the same time that they're acquiring those skills that they will need to succeed, they're also acquiring the English language. So it's fair to say that when we talk about bilingual <coughs> education, what we're not talking about is teaching English as a second language to students who were born and, and learned to speak a first language other than English. What we're talking about is other academic skills and what language we teach those in. That's correct. We're, we're teaching second language acquisition through some form of immersion. Ramona, in your experience, how <coughs> successful are we in California in terms of using bilingual education? Well, a good bilingual education program should teach children English, if that's what they are uh, desirous of learning, and at the same time uh, keep them up to their grade level in subject matter. So that may mean that they should be taught subjects that they uh, need to keep up to their grade level in a language they're uh, familiar with, at the same time learning English. I think that California um, has probably not done a good job. First of all, the programs have been underfunded. Um, there are 1.3 million children in Los Angeles who native language is something other than English, and only 30 percent of them are in bilingual education classes. There is a profound shortage of teachers who can truly teach bilingual education. So I'm not here to, to defend bilingual education. I think it, it, if it's done well, it's probably a good idea. Um, I'm here to talk about uh, why this particular initiative will not uh, do what it's cracked up to do. Well, we're going to talk about the initiative which in California from time to time is affectionately referred to as the UNS initiative uh, after Ron UNS who is its author. But before we get to talking specifically about the UNS initiative, Sherry, I want to ask you a question. Where does um, this movement to do away with the current form of bilingual education in California come from? Okay, uh, a couple places. I just want to address real quickly what I believe native li what bilingual uh, instruction has become in California, which is different throughout the United States. In California, bilingual education is generally native language instruction. So like you were saying, uh, uh, children who are immigrants or who were born here and have uh, surnames or speak one language in the home are taught in their native language for between five and seven years before being transitioned onto English. 
And that was the problem that was brought to our attention uh, over a year ago, actually uh, February of 96. There was a Latino boycott in downtown Los Angeles. A group of Latino parents boycotted their school until the administration agreed that their children could learn English. Uh, they had fought and fought and asked, and the administration said, absolutely not. You will be in bilingual programs learning Spanish. Frankly, the reason is because they receive extra funding for each child who remains in a bilingual program or who is not reclassified as English proficient. So from the perspective of the initiative. campaign and the initiative <coughs> to change the nature of bilingual education in California, um, the moving factor was a group of unhappy parents who felt that their kids weren't being given English language tools. Correct. I have got to let you respond to that, Holly, because <laughs> you are the spokesperson for the No on 227 <coughs> campaign, which is, of course, the, came, the same initiative that Sherry is the spokes spokesperson in support of, uh, and, and ask where you see the problem with the uh, initiative that is before the California voters, generally, as right, opposed to taking each paragraph. Certainly. There's several major problems. The first is, is that it's a $50 million a year big government spending program. An amazing going, statement, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, what, what this proposition will do is it's going to take California's 1.38 million children out of their classroom put them in one classroom for only 180 days. Absolutely well, let's no, 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 hold on, sir, hold on. Let's let's be sure our, let's be sure that our, that our uh, listeners understand that we're not talking about putting 1.3 million kids all together in one large stadium. Right. For no, the no, year. No. That's <laughs> no, not, not where you're <laughs> headed. You're here. No, not not one one classroom, but it's going to take children of all different ages, all different cultural backgrounds, all different languages spoken and the proposition does allow those children to be mixed in one classroom. It's going to give them only 180 days, one year. One school year. Right, one school year. One school year. And it's a sink or swim program. If they don't learn enough English in that year, they're out of the classroom and they go into their mainstream classroom without getting a chance to acquire enough English to compete successfully. So some of them will and some of them won't. Well, all research shows that children do not pick it up within 180 days. Do not pick it up a second language. English. It normally takes three to seven years basically for them to pick it up. In addition, what the proposition does is it appropriates an additional fifty million dollars a year that's taken out of the classroom, out of the schools, and given to adults who pledge to tutor a child in English. So we're using a 